For the first 35 years of my life, I was a disbeliever. I knew there is no God, I didn't see any need for God, and I didn't believe in God. But ever since I was small, I was interested in science. And as my knowledge of science grew, 25 years ago, in basically a flash, I came to the conclusion that the universe is so perfectly made and everything so perfectly matches together that there must be God. So in one second I went from certainty there is no God to certainty there must be God and only one God. So I accepted there is God. I said, Hashhadu ala ilaha illallah. But I was not looking for a religion. I thought all religions are wrong. And I bought a Quran, English translation of the Quran. And when I started reading it, I started reading it with the same idea that just like Bible, it was written by man. Only in this case, we know the name of the man, Muhammad. And then when I was maybe about one third in Quran, I remember telling my wife, you know, this Muhammad, he must have been a very smart, very intelligent man because this book is very clear, very logical, very easy to follow and there are no contradictions. But then as I read later, I suddenly saw a scientific fact which I knew was only discovered in the 20th century. So immediately I saw that Muhammad is not the author of the Quran. That Muhammad is a messenger sent by God to give the Quran to mankind. I saw, mashallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. That was the greatest blessing of my life. I have wonderful family, I have wonderful children, wife, everything. But the greatest blessing was that God showed me his guidance. And when I pray, I make dua, God, please let me die as a believer. Let me never disbelieve again. In every age, People have always wondered how this seamless universe originated. Where it leads to, how the laws maintaining its order and balance work. For centuries, scientists and thinkers have made numerous researches on this issue and produced quite a few theories. The prevailing thought of the 19th century was that the universe was a collection of matter infinite in size that existed since eternity and that would continue to exist forever. Laying the groundwork for the materialist philosophy, this view denied the existence of a creator while it maintained that the universe had neither a beginning nor an end. However, an American astronomer by the name of Edwin Hubble made one of the greatest discoveries in the history of astronomy. While he observed the stars with a giant telescope, he found out that they emitted a reddish light depending on their distance. This meant that the stars were moving away from us. Because according to the recognized rules of physics, the spectra of light beams traveling towards the point of observation tends towards violet, while the spectra of light beams moving away from the point of observation tend toward red. During Hubble's observations, the light from stars was discovered to tend towards red. This meant that they were constantly moving away from us. Before long, Hubble made another very important discovery. Stars and galaxies moved away not only from us, but also from one another. The only conclusion that could be derived from a universe where everything moves away from everything else is that the universe constantly expands. The expansion of the universe implied that if it could travel backwards in time, 
the universe would prove to have originated from a single point. The universe had come about by the explosion of this single point with zero volume. This great explosion was named the Big Bang. This information is given in a nutshell in the glorious Quran in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 30. Do not the unbelievers see, in a very interesting beginning, do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit of creation before we cleave them asunder. Imagine, this information we came to know recently, the Quran mentioned 1400 years ago. And Hubble's data was checked and rechecked, and it turned out to be right. The universe was expanded. It wasn't static. And Hubble went on to win the Nobel Prize for this amazing discovery. And then you have, surprisingly, you find this book, this ink on a page that tells you where we came from, and you plug that question with your particular brand of a god. Theists have been doing this for centuries, for millennia. They have been plugging that question with their god. You speak about God. We call Allah God. What is Allah? Allah, by from the Islamic perspective, means the God, the absolute, indivisible God. When you say it's falsifiable, falsify my existence. I challenge that. Tell me that I don't exist. Because the minute you discuss your existence and my existence, you and I have to go back and question the integrity where we come from. The expansion of the universe implied that if it could travel backwards in time, the universe would prove to have originated from a single point. The only conclusion that could be derived from a universe where everything moves away from everything else is that the universe constantly expands. And so then we read in the Quran, in Surah al dhariyat and the heavens we have built with power and force, and we are expanding it. Expanding it. Expanding it. Expanding it. Expanding it. Expanding it.